In the United Kingdom, on the 26th of May, 2015, a tragic case unfolded. It revolves around Philip Nicholson, a young man from Dorset, who was known for his kind nature and close bond with his family. Despite facing learning difficulties, Philip was determined to be independent. In 2013, at the age of 20, he made the brave decision to move into supported living. Philip's pursuit of independence brought him immense happiness as he embarked on the next chapter of his life. However, it's important to note that Philip had global development delay, a condition that caused significant delays in both his cognitive and physical development. Despite this, he possessed artistic traits and had an IQ of approximately 62. Supported by a care agency, Philip relocated to Bournemouth, where he received assistance to live independently. Care workers were assigned to support him, assessing the areas in which he required assistance. Surprisingly, despite his learning disabilities, Philip was deemed capable of making his own decisions, including pursuing a romantic relationship, which he greatly desired. However, a doctor who had worked with Philip since 2009 noted that he struggled to express his emotions and often said what he believed others wanted to hear. During his time in Bournemouth, Philip confided in a community learning disability nurse about his feelings of loneliness and longing for a relationship. He also shared these sentiments with his parents. In March 2014, Philip began conversing with a woman named Isabella Gosling. Their relationship blossomed quickly through social media. Isabella, who had atypical autism and suffered from personality disorders, became Philip's girlfriend. With newfound independence and a romantic partner, Philip had achieved what he desired most. However, concerns arose on April 3rd when the staff at Philip's residence reported a safeguard alert. They believed that Isabella was coercing him physically and exploiting him financially, even opening a phone contract in his name. Isabella also frequently emotionally manipulated Philip, sending him threatening text messages. The situation escalated, leading to police involvement due to the increasingly threatening messages. Eventually, the relationship between Philip and Isabella ended, as she began seeing another man named Richard Moore behind Philip's back. Astonishingly, the manipulation continued, and they convinced Philip to grant them access to his bank account. Richard also sent Philip threatening messages. In September 2014, Philip reported these threats to the police, who were already aware of Richard's history of targeting vulnerable individuals for personal gain. The couple would alternate between bullying Philip and pretending to be his friend, delighting in toying with his emotions. Despite the staff at Philip's residence being aware of his previous relationship with Isabella, they recognized the risk of emotional, domestic, and financial exploitation he faced. In May 2015, Philip received more threatening messages from Isabella and Richard, including death threats and instructions to dig his own grave. Eventually, he decided to cut ties with Isabella. However, she claimed to be pregnant and insisted that Philip was the father, manipulating his kind nature to re-enter his life as he wished to be there for her and the child. She falsely accused Philip of forcing himself upon her, an unsubstantiated claim. Isabella called Philip, pretending to be another woman interested in meeting him, knowing he would likely fall for the ruse. They arranged a meeting, and Philip can be seen on CCTV footage cautiously following them, aware of their previous behavior. The trio spent time together in town before returning to Isabella's flat. Inside, Richard launched a premeditated and brutal attack on Philip, while Isabella recorded the horrifying events on her phone. Throughout the 17-minute audio recording, Philip can be heard pleading and crying, expressing his desire to stop the threats and maintain a friendship. Ignoring his pleas, Richard proceeded to stab Philip in the neck with a knife. Witnessing blood flow from Philip's wound, Isabella callously requested him to move away from her bed as he continued to bleed profusely. Philip, in his desperation, asked to go home, but Isabella heartlessly replied that he wouldn't be going anywhere. Philip suffered a substantial loss of blood, leaving him on the brink of death. Instead of showing remorse, the couple heartlessly taunted him. Richard cruelly urged Philip to remain on the floor, bleeding, asking if he was experiencing paralysis or had ceased breathing, and callously stating that nobody would miss him. Despite his desperate apologies and a plea for friendship, Philip's words fell on deaf ears. Isabella, devoid of compassion, commanded Richard to end Philip's life. In a horrifying act, Richard sliced Philip's throat, sealing his tragic fate. 
The relentless assault had persisted for 17 minutes. Isabella continued to record the aftermath, capturing their chilling discussion. In a disturbing suggestion, they contemplated manipulating the evidence by positioning Philip's lifeless body to appear as if he had inflicted these wounds upon himself. They propped his body against the fridge, placing the knife in his hand. The eerie footage from the CCTV surveillance cameras captured the couple once again as they walked away from the scene, leaving behind the horrifying consequences of their evil actions. They boarded a bus, and Richard proposed to Isabella, who accepted. However, Isabella later made a distressing call to her workers, confessing that Richard had committed something terrible and she couldn't stop him. The police promptly arrived at Isabella's flat, discovering the gruesome scene. Isabella and Richard were arrested, initially attempting to shift the blame onto Philip himself. Nevertheless, the police saw through their deceit. Isabella denied any involvement and maintained her innocence, citing diminished responsibility. Richard accepted responsibility for his actions, while Isabella's plea of innocence on grounds of diminished responsibility necessitated a trial. During the subsequent trial, Isabella's phone, containing the incriminating recording, was presented as evidence, leaving no doubt as to their guilt. Philip's devastated parents witnessed the horrifying truth of their son's final moments. They saw crime scene photos and listened to the chilling seven-minute recording in which Philip repeatedly apologized and begged to go home before he was brutally murdered. The court was left in no doubt about what had occurred. Isabella and Richard, appearing somewhat nonchalant, were ultimately found guilty of murder. The courtroom was disturbed when the pair exchanged smiles as they prepared for sentencing. Isabella received a life sentence with a minimum term of 19 years, while Richard was sentenced to life with a minimum term of at least 22 years. Following the sentencing, Detective Chief Inspector Stuart Palmer of Dorset Police described Isabella and Richard as truly evil, having subjected Philip to a prolonged and brutal attack. He considered this case one of the most harrowing in his 30-year career, particularly appalled by the fact that they recorded the violent act. The impact on Philip's mother was profound, as expressed in her victim impact statement, in which she shared the profound grief and void caused by her beloved son's loss. In conclusion, the tragic murder of Philip Nicholson by his ex-partner Isabella Gosling and her lover Richard Moores sheds light on the critical need for improved protection and information sharing in cases involving vulnerable individuals.